Okay, today we need to perform engine wash on one of our A320 aircrafts uh, with the CFM engines and for that we're gonna use this cycling machine. Uh, what is this machine doing? Basically we will fill it with a certain amount of water and then we're gonna preheat it to 70 degrees. We're gonna wash it only with a pure water, not with solution. So uh, we preheat the water and it will gonna provide certain pressure to inject the water inside of the compressor. Uh, it can be completely independent, it have its own generator, uh, but uh, in the hangar of course we plug it always to socket. And um, yeah, you can basically uh, you can basically perform this engine wash everywhere. We have uh, blankets up there, uh, the adapters we have uh, in the hangar, so depends which engine you want to wash. Uh, that ad those adapters uh, we will gonna take. We can wash uh, every engine which uh, Austrian half in the fleet, and yeah, uh, this is exhaust from the generator. If you if you want to perform uh, engine wash outside, but yeah, everything is inside. Uh, now we're gonna fill it with water, and yeah, we'll wait until the airplane arrived. Meanwhile, I'll show you the adapters, which is supposed to be here. Okay, since I've been talking about adapters, uh, here we have uh, adapters for our short haul fleet. Here you can see one for Embraer. Uh, this is for CF-34. Next to it, those are for CFM-56. Actually, those we're gonna use today. And this is the nozzle through which the water we're gonna be sprayed into the engine and yeah it holds on the engine thanks to these four hooks all the way around and it's attached to the spinner it holds holds on it on this rubber so you don't need to be afraid and it will be damaged somehow and on this we're gonna connect our hose and uh, last one from short haul fleet or mid-range is uh, this one. This is for PV-1000G. This is for our Neo fleet. And of course the diameter is big, bigger, bigger and yeah, nozzle. And thanks to those devices we are cleaning, as I said, our short and mid-range fleet. And now we're gonna take a look on the other hangar, on the one for long range. So let's take a look at it. Okay, behind me you can see Boeing 767, which is equipped with the PV4000 engines. And here in front of me, you can see adapters for this engine. And as you can see, they're huge. But uh, those underneath, there for GE90, which uh, we have on our 777s. And as you can see, those probes are huge. Of course, the cycling unit, which is there, have a special program for each of those engines. But we're gonna use one for our CFM56. So let's prepare that quickly. Okay, and why do we actually need to perform engine wash when airplanes are flying quite often through the rain, right? That should do the job as well. Well, it's not really true. And reason behind it is that those huge fans are basically uh, centrifuges. And what does it mean? Water is heavier than air. And that means that whenever uh, water hits the fan, it's pushed out to the cold stream, which means that almost no water will get to the hot section in that inner smaller circle. And basically that's why we need to perform engine wash to get water into the core in certain pressure and certain amount of course. And by that we're gonna remove all the oil, grease, uh, dust, 
uh, burn oil, everything what sticks to the blades of the compressor of the turbine and all the internal parts with this water or with water with solution, we will clean the blades and that way we will increase efficiency and we will allow engine to run on lower temperatures and burn less fuel. And that's what we want. We want to reduce the consumption. So we clear that and now let's prepare the equipment. Okay, so we reach uh, the 100 liters, so that will close and we can switch on heating. Okay, airplane is here, the device is heated up, so we need to move it to our aircraft and yeah, later on when everybody will gonna be finished. We will plug into our plane and we'll perform the engine wash. I'll just pack everything and we'll go there. Good, so let's go. So as a part of preparation on each engine, we need to remove anti-ice uh, muscle air hose. So the water will not gonna get inside of the anti ice valve. And one more tube. That's one. And then uh, the second one is uh, PS, uh, PS3, which is over here. Uh, that one. And then we can proceed with uh, engine wash itself, which means installation of all equipment. And yeah, after that, we can perform engine wash. Uh, the thing is that since uh, our hangar is connected to a special sewage system, we don't need to put the blankets under the engine. Uh, because the, the dirt from the engine will gonna be separated in that uh, place where the sewage goes. Yeah, that's real advantage of our hangar. Hey. Yep. That's it. Uh, nope. Okay, now quick test. So let's perform the first one. Okay, system is probably washed. So we can install the spring adapters on the engine. To fit in between. Huh? There. And here it can't touch. This you hook it over the blade. One. Open. Huh? You need to lock always. And then two on the bottom. Open linkage one and the other one. Okay, so as you can see it holds on the spinner thanks to this two these two rings and you have a rubber protection on it and then it holds thanks to this pads which are secured against the uh, blades and this locked 
thanks to spring. And then the important part are nozzles, which pointing into the hot section. And of course, that way we will spray water only there. And that's what we want. Uh, engine wash adapters are installed on both engines. Now, basically, we'll install water supply to this one. Uh, after this one, we'll move the, to the other one. And, yeah, we can perform our engine wash. I'll just set the program for our aircraft. Yep, and basically we are good to go. So whenever everybody's finished with their work, uh, we will start the APU and we'll perform engine wash. As you can hear, APU is already running and I gave signal to my colleague in the cockpit that he can perform dry crank. Of course, I need to inform all the people around that we're gonna rotate the engine. And what actually does it mean dry crank. We will rotate the engine but without fuel and ignition and only thanks to starter we are able to reach speed around 30% of N2 which is more than enough to distribute water through the whole hot section. As you could see I didn't switch on program immediately because I need to wait 10 seconds after motoring started and of course I need to see positive fan rotation and only then I can start injecting water into the core. The whole process will take two minutes during which cycling will perform its program. After that we will gonna leave the water soaking for five minutes and then we'll repeat the whole process again. And since we need to wait, we'll move to engine number one, start from engine work there, and then, as I said, we'll return back. This procedure should ensure sufficient cleaning of the core section. Wash number two on this engine has been performed, and meanwhile, I'm waiting till five minutes pass on engine number one. I will start with the removal of the adapter on this engine, and then, of course, we'll perform engine wash again on engine number one. All that's remaining is dry crank on this engine, and again, dry crank on the other one. Engine washing both engines have been performed. We can start packing everything. And yeah, as I said, uh, last dry crank is remaining. But for that, of course, we don't need equipment. What is this last dry crank good for? Basically, we try to blow out all unwanted water from the core and from a PS3 line and anti-ice valve line. Because we don't want the water in EEC or in anti-ice valve, this can cause corrosion. So whenever we are sure that there is no water left in these pipes, we can install everything back. Uh, now we just need to return aircraft back to serviceable condition which means to install uh, PS3 and anti-ice uh, valve, so uh, anti-ice valve uh, connection. So I will start with uh, PS3. Good. So PS3. Done. Now we need to secure it with the locking cable. One line to the other. Great.
Great. So that's tight. Now we can move to Anti S valve. What I want to also show you guys, uh, this is our safety cable kit. Yeah, it's still uh, here on the table, but it comes together with uh, like a manual how to properly install the cables. And this is quite interesting thing. So if you're struggling, here you have a little bit of help. Yeah. And of course, yeah. The, manual for the tool which is cool yep that's all what i want to show you so the anti is both tight and basically that's it now uh, if if uh, there are going to be engines start in the next uh, 12 hours, we don't need to perform engine run-up, which actually will going to be, so our job is done. We just need to uh, close both engines, but yeah, then we close uh, fan coils, sea ducts, and yeah, that's it. Okay, this is all what I want to tell you about engine wash. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. As always, I would like to ask you to don't use this as a replacement for the maintenance manual, but always use latest documentation released by manufacturer. Thank you for your time. My name is Tomáš. This was Aircraft Maintenance with Zeto. And I'll see you next one. Bye.